Hi, I'm Dominic from AskMeDIY.com. Today we're going to show you how to change the oil filter on a oil-fired boiler. Uh, it could also be an oil furnace, really doesn't matter, but as long as it's an oil-fired uh, system, you're going to have the same kind of filter that we're going to change today. It may look a little different, but still the same, gets done the same exact way. Right, here we are. This is what the filter actually looks like. I'm sure you have, uh, it may look a little different on yours, but it could um, be very much the same. Next to it, which would be before it, the line that follows up to it coming from the oil tank, either be in the ground or uh, in the garage or whatever it may be, you'll have a valve. You want to turn that off, because you don't want to allow the oil to go keep coming out. On top, you're going to have a bolt. You just um, take the bolt out. One thing I almost missed on is that you're going to want a, uh, a pan nice pan to catch the oil that's actually going to come out. So it will come out. I mean that filter is supposed to be filled and it's about half a quart of oil which uh, could be quite nasty. So you see I took the top off, the long bolt there and you see it dripping out if you can see that at all. And you're just going to give it a little a little tap. Give it a helping hand here. Oh, there it goes. And uh, of course it's uh, filled with oil Oof, look at that dirt. Ugh, that's nasty. Oh, man. On the back of it, you'll see there's another little uh, little bolt. I'll unscrew that. Put it to the side. And voila. There goes the, the filter. And if you can see on my hands, I mean, ugh, that's uh, pretty... Pretty nasty, and uh, this boiler was working, but that's for sure it's, uh, wasn't going to be working for much longer. In the filter, this is a, uh, a wool filter. Uh, ones that you might be taking out could look a little different. Not a big deal. Um, you know, pull that little big nut out there, and you'll see it's going to go in the same exact way, right in there. Now you have the actual canister. Now, if you're able to look in there, that's pretty nasty. Right here, there's also a seal. Pull that seal out, throw that in the garbage because a new one came with the filter. Now, one of the reasons you're changing the filter to keep things clean, in this case, that's pretty dirty in there. So, just got a paper towel, get in there and give it a nice, good clean. Yeah. That's nasty. Nasty, nasty. But that's the whole idea, right? That's why we're changing it. Keep it clean. Keep it good. Okay. If you have any really big pieces of sediment in there, you definitely want to uh, use something else to probably clean it. Oh, nice and clean. If you can see that, I don't know why you can get in there, but looks good. Back the same way you took the old filter out. Push it in there, and you got that bolt on the bottom. Now, also, I don't know if you can see this or not, there's a little seal here, a little paper type seal. Throw that out, and of course, a new one that came with the filter. You can put that on right in the, right in the bottom there. This little uh, bolt is actually a drain plug that you can drain if you have any uh, water or such in there. I'm just going to give that a nice little snug there. We're going to tighten it up after we get the filter on. And also that seal that we removed from here, we have a, a brand new one to go. And visually inspect the top of this here. Make sure there's no big pieces of dirt and anything left behind. And it all looks good. I'll put it right back up in there. And it will fit, feel much tighter. But of course it's a new filter. <sighs> Bolt go down, back down to the center. And feel catch. And there we go. Now one important, real important thing. Before you crank down on this bolt which can make it all get all cocked and uh, really leak. You want to make sure it fits good, nice and square, and it's 
kind of free to move around. Real important. And I, I'm, as I'm turning this bolt, I'm honestly pushing up on it, making it snug, just with my hands. So now I can feel it's snug, it's a good fit. Then I can continue to tighten it up with the wrench. My wrench doesn't uh, work very well here. Oof. Time for a new one. Okay, so you're going to tighten it down. You're not going to crank down on it like you're tightening a tire on a car, but tight and snug. Remember, you have that rubber seal in there that's squishing down. And if you tighten it too much, you squish it to the extent that it's going to break. Now back to the one on the bottom, this is it, which is a plug really, and boom, just a little tightening. Give it a little cleaning, and now, all done with your filter change. Also, remember when you turned that valve off earlier, now we're going to turn it back on. This is going to allow the oil to go back into the oil canister, which of course is where the oil filter is. While that oil is going in there, and it can very well not be going in there, it depends on how much pressure you actually have of the oil coming in. Because this is actually a pump over here, which, is, which we'll show you how to prime that in a second. So, while that's running in, and you're hoping that it's running in, check for oil leaks. Any oil leaks. I mean, you don't want the littlest oil leak. You want it to be 100% tight, and you want to definitely inspect it after you have it running. Now we're going to go over and prime the system because obviously you see all the oil come out but now you have all the air. The air has got to go somewhere and it's not going to go into the boiler, the firing system because of course air doesn't burn like that. Okay, now that we change the filter we have the air is left in the system which we need to get out. Right here you know your typical oil burner setup. Yours may look different of course but it's basically all going to be the same. You got your filter, the lines which runs into a pump and then, of course, you're going to have a bleeder valve on the pump. And this particular boiler, it's right here. So we can uh, see what it looks like. Maybe a little hard, but it's right there. It looks like a little teeny valve, uh, which actually you're going to have to crack open. You're not going to remove it. Removing it would be um, not a good idea because you're going to have to do this, bleed the system, while it's trying to run. Okay, so there we, we opened it up a little bit. This, this particular one's loose. I'm going to go ahead and turn the boiler on, so it may get a little loud. So what we're actually going to do, the boiler is going to be running, the pump is running rather, which is going to be pushing all the oil. Instead of going into the system, the oil is going to be coming back out of here. So you want to make sure you have a nice pan under it. In this case, it's a nice clean flow right into the pan. Normally, I would put a hose on that and then put that hose into a canister. But... Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to leave it wide open so I'll show you because once you see the oil coming out, it doesn't mean it's, it's ready to go. When it comes out a nice solid, then you can close it up. As you close this up, you want to do it relatively quickly, and then the oil, the oil burner should fire right up. So let me go ahead and turn the, the switch back on and see what we, what we got. Like I said, it's probably going to get a little loud, of course, as most oil burners are pretty loud. And there we go. You can see all the air now. Yeah, it's dripping out. It's actually picking out a lot of air. It's still going. <laughs> That's quite a bit of air, actually. Oh, and there we go with some oil. Okay, now that's nice and solid. Now we're going to close it up. And keep that pan under there. And boom. And tighten that back up. Nice and tight. As you can hear, the oil burner is on. And no leaks anywhere. And you are all set. Well, you did it. You changed your very first oil filter on your oil-fired system. Remember to check for leaks. And that oil pan that you use to catch all that oil and put that filter in, make sure it's far away from the boiler. It's really not a safe thing to keep it around. So, anyway, if you have any more questions and want to learn more, come see me. Ask me, DIY.com.